What is going on everyone? My name's Boyt and I'm back with some more Age of Mythology, the Titans action spawning in the top of the map in the red color playing as Kronos. His name is More Win. Yes, More Win. His opponent today in the blue color playing as Isis. His name is Chemo. This was the meta play meta plays winners final which was if i recall correctly a best of three and this was game three and this was and you get to pick your map if you lose the previous game which more did lose so more picked anatolia he specifically picked anatolia and he picked chronos on this map this is Big, big cojones more if I've ever seen one, seen him. He's been shedding Anatolia with uh, Atlantean. If you don't know that term, it, it means practicing vigorously. Uh, it's like you have your shed out the back and you go out there and you practice your art. Uh, this is more showing us Anatolia at its finest here. So, what is he going to do? Cronus has got some very, very obvious advantages here. First advantage... Deconstruction. As we see that getting thrown down immediately, unfortunately, Moore's timing of this is actually incorrect. Uh, you want to throw this uh, this deconstruction down, uh, and we'll actually see where it is. As we see a whole bunch of villagers on food right now. You want to throw the deconstruction down just as the Isis player would be building his third fishing ship, because that's when you do as much damage as possible. Because right now, Chemo is getting no damage done to his build whatsoever. He's going to be able to get this dock up. He's going to be fine. His fishing ship will be fine. He will be able to build a fishing ship immediately here and be fine. And he is going to be going up to the top side of the map as well. Uh, so we'll see if Kimo is going to be a little bit scared of Kronos here, doing a, something a little bit different with the build. Normally we see 18 fishing ship on Anatolia, but you're against Kronos and Kronos is probably going to want to try and rush you. Uh, generally speaking, if I'm in this position against a Kronos player, what I do is I go both sides and then I just keep building fishing ship on the side that the opponent isn't and I sack the side that he wants to take down don't care I am winning in that situation um, but there's ways around that so we'll see uh, we'll see what chemo's gonna go for here now more doing his thing he's got himself two villagers on wood over here he's built his second dock over here I love that dock holy dock this this more and he is he is a very 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 smart player no matter what anyone says this guy has such a big brain he's going to move forward and he is going to be taking the entirety of this side of the dock of this side of the water minus three fishing ships is going to be his aim and he doesn't have to send a citizen down here at all this is so big brain and he can continue to put docks over here not only that he's eating deer over on this side have you ever seen a better Atlantean player? Name one. Name one. This guy is so smart. We'll see how this game's going to go. What Kimo needs to do in response to this, I don't know. I don't know. I've never seen this before. I've got nothing for you. Uh, I think I think going full send on this side of the water would be the option here. As soon as he sees this dock, just go, okay, you can have that. I'm going on the other side. Because that that's just huge. Uh, and I think, I think more might even just go... It looks like Moore's going 515 here as well. Where's the temple? House? Temple? 515? Oof! More win eat your heart out. I can't tell you how good this uh how good this build is from Moore. It, this is some this is some next level meta. This is changing the this is the this the meta changing in front of your eyes after how many years? How many years? We've had 20 years of Asian mythology and we're still seeing new stuff. We are still see we do see Kimo being a cheeky bugger here getting this dock up, but I imagine that Moore's easily going to be able to take this down with a uh, Valor and a couple Promethean uh, as he is advancing. He is going through Prometheus. He is actually coming down the bottom of the map and look at this. There's two villagers on gold. All these villagers on wood right now. This villager over here is going onto gold as well. I'm not sure exactly what that's about. I wouldn't be surprised to see a third dock on this location here, uh, but we do see the citizen making her way down the bottom of the map to start uh, getting some uh, something set up over here. And Chemo going through Anubis. 
So he's going through Anubis for the sheer sake of Plague of Serpents. He's not backing himself to hold Kronos without Plague of Serpents. This is going to nerf, not nerf, this is going to limit his ability to have a strong mid-game power spike with the security of having Plague of Serpents. So we'll see how this is going to go. We do see Docs getting thrown up over here. This Doc is up and Kimo is going to be spotting this one here. As we do see some Barim coming down on this location. So we'll see how this is going to go. I really, to be honest, I really don't like Anubis here for Chemo. Uh, I, going Bath seems to be the only option here. We do see a cheeky doc from Chemo. He is a spicy boy. And I do, I oh, just more see it. More does see it. But honestly, like, look at the map right now. Can you tell if there's a blue dot here or not? Can you tell if there's a blue dot here? You can't tell. chemo has got the advantage on this map with the blue color. And he is abusing it, that's for sure. <laughs> and we do see double Promethean now already. Four, uh, four more. He's going to come and clean this dock up very, very shortly. We've got the Bereem coming over here. The village, the fishing ships will be able to finish up this dock, but one villager has been sniped off. And these fishing ships will simply just jump into this dock and be very happy here after the Bereem get sent away. But we do see an immediate deconstruct here from more. Very smart. Not forgetting about that technology as the Promethean going to go up to this dock here. And the one cabinet chilling in the dock going to be waiting uh, for something else as we do see the Anubite now going to be looking for some raids. Chemo is in a very, very diff difficult position here. And no attempt at any unit that's coming out here, but this could be raids later in the game. Uh, Chemo with only 12 fishing ship currently. So we'll see how it's all going to go. And we do see the, uh, the priest getting targeted down here. Nice play from Moore as he does manage to clean this up. And guess what? Moore can go, Moore can go Heroic Age now, which is absolutely gigantic. So go Heroic Age, you go through, um, you go through Hyperion, and you get access to Nereids, and we see the Armory coming down. You get access to Nereids, and you just say GG your water. You can't hold this. They're like, Nereids are like, uh, are like Skylar, but on crack because they cost next to nothing and you can just move in, use the special, run away or just come and snipe fishing ships instead and you can just cause absolute havoc on your opponent's, uh, on your opponent's waterline. You also get Chaos, which is three enemy ships completely turn uh, the tides. And we do see this dock also uh, get taken out. As we see a couple of cabinets now going after Moore's fishing ships as they will go down here. Nice play from Kimo to get some pressure on here. But Kimo's got... He's only got this fish left. So he's in a he's in a very difficult position. He's going to try and get to the next age. Uh, and we'll see how it's going to go. I wouldn't be surprised. It always... We see Rhea. Ladies and gentlemen, we see Rhea. But Moore's got no favor in the bank. So what's he going to use the trade? Well, what's he going to what's he going to get from this? Is the question. Obviously, he gets one free behemoth. It's not enough to push in. There's a pharaoh. There's a priest. Uh, there are villagers that'll get taken out. He's got eight favor here, and he's got a Promethean. He's got some Promethean over here. They're going to help out. We just see the pharaoh over here actually coming in to try and take down these Prometheans. Nice play here, but uh, they're going to be getting out of here fairly easily. Got these speedy boys, Promethean. Offspring 6.05 speed with Kronos. We do see the Behemoth wandering in onto this location. We've got some more time shifting shenanigans coming through for more as he's going straight after this town center. Uh, his Behemoth getting a little bit power blocked, but he's going to be able to get in here. The Prometheans are onto this location, and Kimo's going to be kicking himself for moving Reneferef over to that side of the map. The Behemoth getting a whole bunch of damage done here as we do see Plague of Serpents getting thrown down here. The villagers going to attempt to repair this one back up. We've got the Mermillo coming in here to help out as well. There is going to be a potential Valor to get thrown down here. Uh, he hasn't he hasn't used it yet. I'm surprised to see him not use it. He's had the three Mermillo there, but it's fine. And the town center is looking like it is not long for this world. There is still this Pharaoh over here. It will be able to do a bunch of damage to the Behemoth. The Behemoth is going to be able to deflect a lot of that damage with its 75% pierce armor. The town center has got 100 HP left, 200 HP left, 100 HP left. One more shot, very close, and it does end up dying. The town center lives with 50 HP remaining as so many more villagers coming back over here. And yet again, Chemo managed to hold Moore's push here, ladies and gentlemen. If Moore didn't build that Promethean and instead built a uh, 
another behemoth there, that town center would have gone down and we would have seen one of the fastest tap outs on Anatolia from Kimo you've ever seen. But Kimo, he will show you he's not he's not made for tapping out. He will hold. He will hold and hold for days. But we do see this build is not all in for more. He's getting himself a second town center. He's got himself the the uh, the palace up. He's got himself those cheap destroyers. 63 food, 54 gold instead of 70 food, 60 gold. Just a little bit cheaper because of Kronos Siege being cheaper. And we're going to start seeing these towers going down. We do see a uh, cheeky check of the town center to see if you can take it down. Realizing you cannot. Might pull back. Keep producing. We've got 69 population for chemo. And 95 population, four more. So he's going to be retreating back. How much favor in the bank right now? Four more. He's got 11 favor. I feel like spending most of that on Palace here and just, get, just going straight in with Arcus, uh, Arcus Destroyer. It's going to be the way to go. We do see Kimo holding on this position here. He's got seven cabinets here, two docks on this position. He's got enough to start pushing through the fishing of more. He has cleaned up this location as well, somehow, some way. And Kimo's actually got himself a lot of fishing ships. So even after it's all said and done, Kimo is still very much in this game. He is still very much in this game. We'll see if he's going to be able to do it. We are still seeing more time shift shenanigans. This only costs five wood to do. So it's basically free. And we'll see how that's going to go. We've got some Axemen starting to get built out. We've got some of those Slingers coming out. The Slingers are good against the Arcus, but Arcus are one of the... are actually pretty good against the Slingers anyways because they can shoot long distance and generally speaking counter archers are one of the worst units to build in the game anyways neither here nor there the uh the destroyers can just walk in here he's got five of them medium destroyers 124 population here four more as he's able to get a whole bunch of damage done the destroyers retreating away at this point and do you see 20 favor how much do these behemoths cost they're only they're only 20 favor I thought they might be cheaper with Kronos, but I guess 25 is pretty cheap. So we can get another one. We do see Nephthys coming through now for, uh, for Kimo. He's going to have to use that to defend here because he's not got this gold mine. He's, got, he, he's getting gold starved. He getting gold starved on Anatolia as Isis at 11 minutes and 50 seconds into the game. How have you ever seen this? And the palace time shift. Palace time shift is pretty cheap as well. It costs like 150 wood, 50 gold or something. We do see these destroyers. They are tanking for days, trying to take the town center down. Yet again, uh, trying to deny the uh, the Nephthys here. But this is a lot of a lot of dead uh, destroyers here and, and a very much still alive town center where more could just continue to f target this uh, location down. We do see Prosperity getting thrown down for chemo as he is not got any ideas of what to do here. We do see the villagers getting pulled off of their uh, their gathering duties to go after this palace. You could see Kimo throw a market down and sell food here if he needs more more gold at this point, but not happening just yet. We've got the palace uh, getting up here uh, as fast as possible. And we'll see this palace over here going up. We've got the, uh, the ancestors getting thrown down immediately here for... Uh, for Kimo, for Kimo is he's actually managing to push more back somehow, some way. Kimo is doing it again. What a play here is also we've had to see so many siege brooms over here to clean this up. This is such a big distraction that Kimo has managed to set up here uh, onto onto more. And in fact, over here as well, Kimo is still getting resources on that location. This palace is not up. And what is more doing now? He's got. I don't see, I don't see, I don't see anything right now. He's got no palace. His buildings are getting taken down. Kimo's got himself a, an army right now. Obviously, Ancestors is going to get dealt with soon. We are going to be seeing this, uh, this dock getting taken. <laughs> Kimo's uh, throwing a dock up over here. These, these Bareems will kill it off as soon as it's up, but it's funny watching Siege Bareems deal with a dock. They don't get their bonus against buildings. In fact, they get minus 50% damage versus buildings. What? That's, that's not right. Maybe it is right. There you go. Is that a unique thing for the Siege Barim? That's wild. I didn't know that. Yeah, we see another, another palace coming in here. Can you, and also more going to finish this one off. I love the hero citizen here as well. They, they put the, the buildings up incredibly quickly. Uh, you can't cancel these uh, these palaces here, so this is going to get a lot of damage done. These villagers shanking away here. More units 
piling in 114 pop to 115 pop. The palace does end up getting taken down. Another one will get thrown up here as fast as he possibly can. And we'll see how it's all going to go as these slingers will get taken down very quickly here. Palace almost up. No attempt at a Mythic Age. We do see Chemo attempting at the Mythic Age, though, which is exactly what you normally do against Atlantean. You try and get Mythic, you try and get Son of a Cyrus, but there is another win condition here that more can play into, which is gold mines. This is the only real gold mine here that Chemo's going to be able to get. This one up here is very exposed, very easy to, to attack that. We are going to be seeing more moving up onto that location there to check it out. He's already got the Oracles over here to check this Town Center out, and Chemo is 100% going to be clicking up to... Osiris, they clicked on Thoth accidentally for a second. And Osiris, obviously they've got a choice here. But, it's not that situation that it normally is. Normally it's like Terma, Mass Terma Momillo. And the Son of Osiris completely cleans that army. But this is going to be different. This is like Contarius, this is Arcus, this is a Destroyer. A little bit easier to deal with this one here. Um, so we'll see how it's going to go. We it's trying to get in here again. Can he get in? No, he's going to go after the uh, the house here. And the destroyers onto the town center yet again. It's going to be close. This behemoth coming through might get like a shot off or two onto this town center. Whack. It's going down. The town center is getting deleted here. And there's nothing that Kimo can do this time. The sneak attack from Maul gets in with that behemoth. Town center down. Kimo, 2,000 food, 1,000 gold, and a prayer in this game. As now all more needs to do is get one destroyer to be hacking away at this settlement and it's not going to be able to come back up and we'll see if he can continue fighting him obviously chemo is fine to spam here for days but he wants to get to the mythic age here the settlement does come up but chemo has got no gold in the bank anymore and in fact uh he's well, we is he what's he, is he going mythic he is going mythic through osiris so he is going osiris but no gold left He's got a market. He can sell that food for a decent profit here at this point. We just see a tower getting targeted down. Over here, we've got another Promethean getting built out. And what is what is Moore's uh, option here? Moore could try and get to the Mythic Age here. He's decided to go for three town centers instead. Could have tried to get to the Mythic Age uh, and uh, and go in with Implode. But didn't want to do that. Meanwhile, the... Uh, uh, the ramming Kali's coming through for Kimo as he is just unrelenting uh, in terms of his return damage onto Moore's economy here. Very, very nice play. What I would actually like to see is the, the same thing done by Moore. Just come over here and build a couple of those uh, those units or maybe even like send a behemoth over here to, to snipe down these docks or something like that uh, in tandem with a Barim or two. Uh, and beautiful, beautiful play here from Moore, but Kimo Kimo's going to get Osiris now. He's, he's given he's, he's given more a lot of time though, so I mean we'll see what he's going to do. Is he still producing villages? It looks like we are max villages. No, nineteen villages. Not sure exactly why more isn't building villages anymore, but he has got like so many units, so many. He also traded a scorpion man here, as another scorpion man getting built will immediately get sniped down by those hero Arcus as the uh, as the slingers over here. Still not the best unit to be building. We just see a random siege works coming up on this position. We do see that one getting sniped down. Still no attempt at putting a palace over here. I wouldn't mind seeing like the palace get time shifted backwards and backwards now. I might maybe hold this position with one of these or something. But there's the Osiris. Where's the Pharaoh? There's the Pharaoh here. You see that uh, that mummy coming in straight away to take down one of those Prometheans. But as soon as it goes down to replace it, and we will be seeing more having to retreat back over here. Meanwhile over here, not able to put more pressure on. And Kimo has so many resources in the bank and he's still got a lot of time to trade and stay alive in this game um, before he tries to get over onto this gold mine. He could also try and get a, a trade route somewhere, but it, we do have more shutting that option down quite nicely here as we see the villagers making their way forward, going uh, role-playing as a as villager Ragnarok here. Trying to take these palace down and allow some sort of push forward. We just see these destroyers going after the barracks and one palace looks like it'll go down. Lots of villagers are getting taken down here. We've got a 20 food, 21 fish. We've got Mail of Orichalcos coming through. You don't see that upgrade very often because it um because it gives hack vulnerability, which normally you're, you're not too concerned about. But what what Moore is saying is I'm concerned about the Son of Osiris, 
uh, hacking at my Arcus. I'm just going to make him a little bit more buff, a little bit easier to uh, tank the Son of Osiris. And if it's just an extra hit that's going to come onto it, it's going to be huge. We just see these villagers making their way over here, going to get denied. Son of Osiris getting pushed back. The Arcus over here sitting a little bit idle. More is 140 of 145 population here as the destroyers retreat away. And Kimo still just trying to get over onto that gold mine. He's still got a decent amount of gold in the bank. I think he sees this town center as as a as a way forward for him to get this this gold mine, especially with the the, the son of Osiris here. So we'll see if he's going to be able to get that one up or not. And he is going to go for it. That's a lot of gold to sink into that. He's got 600 left in the bank. Got some military academies coming over here. The army of more is split up at this point as Kimo is very, very happily taking this fight here. We just see the Arcus attempting to focus that Son of Osiris down. 420 HP remaining. But, like all of those Arcus getting taken down as the Arcus over here swing around the back, going straight after that Son of Osiris there. Nice play to uh, kind of surround those at this point. We see the destroyers going straight after this. It's one of the smarter units to go after the Son of Osiris with because, well, if he gets tanked, it's Lots of HP, decent amount of hack armor. Obviously not that much damage, but it's what you want. Well, that Son of Osiris not doing all too much. Look how little the Son of Osiris actually does to the, the Destroyer there. And in that moment, Kimo does decide to tap out more. Like, I mean, let, let, let's be real. There's so many things here that more could have done that was super interesting. But what he did do was so crazy good. This time shift dock forward onto this location. Big brain. Never thought it done before. So good. The time shift over here. The rear timing. Attacking this town center. So good. Just needed two behemoths. Not one. If we had two behemoths. Would have been a different story. So good. Every single bit after that. So good. And he did manage to hold out. He almost gold starved this gold mine as well. Like... That's wild. Well, after he time shifted the palace and he could have time shifted more buildings around it to prevent the villagers from attacking, it would have been another clutch move, but he didn't go for that. Uh, and that was able to get de dealt with. But my holy gosh. Kronos, hashtag viable on Anatolia, ladies and gentlemen. If you guys enjoyed this game, please consider hitting the follow on the Twitch. If you're on the YouTubes, hit that subscribe button. I'll see you guys in the next game.